And today I wanted to talk about their Spectre X360. To let you guys know how it stacks up against the competition and to see if it's worth taking a look at. HP's done a really good job here in terms of build quality. The laptop feels very sturdy, good weight to it in the hand, good feel to it overall. Despite how thin the laptop is, it doesn't feel flimsy or plasticky at all. It feels like a good, nice hunk of metal. The design is a little more subjective. I think it looks good, but by no means great. Also by no means ugly. It's just a very neutral looking laptop. It's very thin, has a very slick profile, but it's definitely not something crazy like the new Lenovo products with their floaty holographic keyboards or anything like that. And speaking of keyboards, this was one of my favorite things about the Spectre X360. Really, really nice keyboard. Keys were nice and big and the spacing was good. Felt a tad cramped sometimes, but I really like the travel on the keys. Despite how thin the laptop is, they still are very, very clicky. It was a pleasure to type on and actually made me want to type up more things. So that's probably the best compliment I can even give a keyboard. Trackpad was a little bit weird, very wide, but short. Regardless, a big enough trackpad that after a little bit of adjustment you get used to, scrolling and gestures were all very smooth. In terms of ports, we have one USB Type-A on the left as well as the headphone and mic input right next to it. And on the right we have two USB-C Thunderbolt 3 ports. Would've been nice to see one extra USB-C Thunderbolt 3 port on the left or see them split one and one on each side, just for flexibility and charging, just to be able to charge from both sides of the laptop, but not really a big issue. And speaking of charging, the battery life on the Spectre X360 was slightly below average in my usage. I was getting about five to seven hours of good usage time. That was with a combination of document creation, web browsing, watching Netflix, and then a little bit of video editing, some slightly heavier stuff on the side. Moving on to the screen, we have a 13 inch display here, 1920 by 1080 WLED backlit touch screen. I think it looks fantastic. 1080p is perfectly fine for this screen size. Images look very sharp, very saturated, very vibrant colors. My favorite thing about this whole display, however, was the super thin side bezels. It gives you this feeling that you're watching some widescreen experience. So watching movies and TV shows is really enjoyable. Now, if you've been looking at this laptop and you haven't guessed to get, HP loves the name of this laptop, hence why it's over the entire thing. But there's another name as well on the speakers, and that's Bang & Olufsen. HP seems to be very proud of their partnership with them. And I gotta be honest, the first time I used the speakers, I really wasn't that impressed. They were very loud, but they sounded very muffled. But I then found the Bang & Olufsen app, as well as the HP Audio app, both of which give you full control over the sound profile. You get a full EQ so you can control the levels of all the frequencies and whatever you're listening to, as well as standard bass and treble controls. With this manual control and the correct settings, depending on what you're listening to and what you prefer in terms of sound, you can get some really good results out of these speakers. They're nice and powerful without sounding like they're too loud or busting at the seams. And you can tell HP was really focusing on the speakers and sound of this product because they had speakers on top, but also speakers below. They made sure to place them in such a way that no matter what mode you're in, laptop mode, tent mode, or tablet mode, you're always getting clear, loud audio. And speaking of those modes, that's the big thing with this laptop. It's a convertible, and HP, like other manufacturers, is marketing the convertible as this amazing laptop and this amazing tablet. In my experience of using and reviewing convertibles, I've come to the conclusion that as of now, and this can obviously change in the future, the perfect laptop doesn't make the perfect tablet, and the perfect tablet does not make the perfect laptop. The Spectre X360 is no different. It is a much better laptop, in my opinion, than it is a tablet, and there's two big reasons for this. When you flip it back and use it in tablet mode, it makes for a very, very thick tablet because you have two parts to it. You have the keyboard base and you have the screen. Also having that keyboard flip back, even though it's turned off, you're still sitting there pressing the keys while you're holding it in tablet mode. It just doesn't feel as secure and as pleasurable to use as a dedicated tablet would. That being said, I don't think it's really fair to complain about it because as a feature, it doesn't take away from the device being a good laptop at all. It's just more of an additional thing if you want to use it. Moving on to performance, we ran some Geekbench tests and got a single core score of 4037 and a multi-core score of 8036. We also ran an OpenCL test and got an OpenCL score of 19,107. So you guys can go see how that compares and contrasts against other computers that are priced similarly or whatever you may be using at the moment. From what we saw, this is about on par with things like the MacBook Air, which the Spectre is clearly competing with, and the Spectre actually came out quite a bit faster on some of those tests. In my real world usage, it was definitely quick, very zippy, got everything I needed to done. If you're gonna be a regular user browsing the web, creating documents, watching videos, this laptop is gonna be more than quick enough and does a really good job stacking up against the competition. 
And so those were the big things that kind of shaped my overall experience with the Spectre X360. However, there were a couple other small features that I thought were awesome, very thoughtful, and very helpful, and also defined maybe who this product was for. Features like quick charge, allowing the battery to charge up to 50% in 30 minutes. HP sleep in charge mode, where the computer can be sleeping or in the hibernation mode and still be charging things plugged in, like phones or tablets via USB. These features, plus the slim profile of the computer, make me really think that it's made for someone who is traveling, constantly on the go and needs a super versatile device that can be charged up very fast and charge other devices when it's in your bag. I know when I'm traveling, these features are very welcome and would be greatly appreciated.